Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your first video, chapter one. I am hoping these videos work out quite well. Remember, the whole point of these videos is to give you the, a short introduction to the chapter and to the specific section. The next day in class, we will go over things in detail. You'll be working in your groups to reinforce these quick intro topics that we're going to be dealing with. If you find that we go too fast through these videos, remember you can pause, you can rewind, you can listen to things more than once. So hopefully you can get what you need to get from these videos so you can participate in the class labs and activities. So let's get started here right away. We're going to talk about reaction kinetics. And kinetics is basically how fast or slow the reaction is going. In this chapter we're going to figure out how we can increase the rate of the reaction or decrease it. What can we do to make the reaction go faster? What can we do to make the reaction go slower? And when we change the rate, we have to be able to calculate. We have to be able to prove that it was going faster or slower. So reaction kinetics is how we can calculate the rate of the reaction. In general, the rate is always going to be the change in some amount over the change in time. Time must be on the bottom. Seconds or minutes is what we're going to use in this class. The amount can be anything, volume, pressure, color, pH. Really, for today, we're just going to call it either grams or moles, because we're going to review some calculations in grade 11. Here is a very typical question, very typical reaction. Zinc solid and hydrochloric acid will give you H2 gas and zinc chloride. Notice the uh, states here, solid aqueous gas. Those are very important. If you have a solid and it's all by itself, you can monitor the change in mass over change in time. If you have things that are aqueous, you could do concentration. If you have a gas, you could do volume or pressure. Those are the things that we're going to be looking, about, looking at and those are the things that we're going to start calculating. Once we're, give, once we're given some numbers to this, moles and molar mass and ratios, we'll be able to figure out how much mass is changing, what is the concentration in big M, molarity, or volume, or pressure. Okay. Here's one that's written out in a different way. You remember this from grade 11. You can write things out in complete ionic form. That's when all of the aqueous ionic compounds are broken down into their ions. Mg solid stays Mg solid. HCl is broken up into H plus and Cl minus. Notice how it's balanced, 2 and 2. H2 gas stays a gas, and the aqueous thing is then broken up into its parts. So you have to figure out what's actually changing. The solid is going down, so you can calculate the change in mass. H2 gas is increasing, so there's going to be a volume or a pressure. The H plus is a concentration, that's in molarity, so you could do change in concentration of H plus. Here's another concentration, it's an ion, it's aqueous, you could do a change in concentration, again molarity. And here's a new one, you'll notice that you've got two CLs on either side. If you have two CLs on either side, you can't calculate the change in that, because it's not changing. You can very simply see here that there are two chlorines on either side of this reaction. If the same thing is on either side of the reaction, it's called a spectator, and we're going to use that word a billion times in this course, so start looking for that. To do a little chem review here, chem 11 review, sorry, if you have a rate, you always have time on the bottom, and what we're going to do is practice converting time from minute to seconds, and we'll practice converting grams to moles and back as well. If you have to convert from minutes to seconds, you, all you need to remember is that there's 60 seconds in a minute. To show the units cancelling off, you want to make sure they're on opposite sides of the unit conversion. So you're going to multiply by one minute over 60 seconds. 0 0.20 divided by 60 is going to give you that number. Now your units are moles per second. A lot of textbooks have SEC. It's totally fine. I probably should as well. If you're going to go from grams to moles, you need to remember there's molar mass from the periodic table. So we have two conversions to do here. We have minutes to seconds, and we have grams to moles. It doesn't matter which one you do first. Let's do the grams to moles first. 
So we need to multiply by the molar mass of zinc, uh, which I can't read from my desk, 65.4. It's over one mole. So now the moles cancel off and I'm left with grams. But we ought to convert minutes to seconds. Well, if you want minutes canceled off, your minute has to be on the opposite side of the unit conversion. So the minutes cancel off. I want seconds on the bottom. So I'm going to end with 60 seconds. Plug this into your calculator. I apologize, I don't have one near me. That's going to be your, your answer. Feel free to give this one a try. We are going to do this tomorrow as a group. So this one is uh, stoichiometry. We're going to be dealing with the mole ratios. The mole ratios are the numbers out in front of a balanced equation. 95% of the questions you get in uh, Chem 12 will be balanced for you, so you don't have to worry about if you're if you're not confident in balancing. But we'll we'll get there tomorrow. This one says if ethane, which is C2H6, is consumed at a rate of 0 0.066 moles per second, how much CO2 uh, is going to be um, consumed? So we need to know the mole ratio between ethane and oxygen. So we're going to start off with what we're given. Um, ethane is consumed at a rate of 0 0.066 moles per second. And I'm going to include all my units. We have to convert it into moles of oxygen. And since we have moles of ethane, we can go through the mole ratio, 7 over 2. Whatever you want is on top, so 7 moles of O2. And whatever you're using to find it is on the bottom, because it is going to be cancelled off. Now we have moles of oxygen, so our final answer is 0 0.066 times 7 divided by 2. And I ran out and got my calculator, so I now know that's 0.23 moles per second. Here's another one, moles to moles, starting off with ethane, moles per second, you want to get CO2, the ratio of CO2 to ethane is 4 over 2. You can fire that through your calculator and you're going to get 0.13 moles per second. Now obviously not everything is going to be moles to moles. We're going to be using grams and we're going to be using um, a couple other units as well. Let's try a, a grams question and then we'll stop here. So 67 0.5 grams of AL, that's what we're starting with, are consumed per second. Calculate the rate of Br2 in grams. So we're starting with AL in grams, we need to go to moles before we can go to the mole bridge. So aluminum, we want moles, so one mole on top. The mass of aluminum is 27.0 grams. The ratio is 3 over 2 of what we want. 3 BRs over 2 ALs. We want to end in grams of BR2, so we're going to multiply that by the molar mass of BR2, which is whatever BR is times 2, should give us 159.8 grams per one mole. And that's going to give us a final answer, 599 grams. So there's a grams to grams question through the mole bridge. And we're going to do this one tomorrow as a group. So here's the end of section 1.1, it's a mole review, an intro to what reaction rates calculations are going to look like, and we have three little lab activities to do over the next couple days and lots of practice. Um, all this stuff is going to start sinking in. Uh, see you tomorrow, everybody.